So what is a financial market, all right? So finance itself is a field of economics, which is basically, if you remember, economics is the study of the allocation of scarce resources. Within finance, we're looking at the same thing. We are looking at the allocation of scarce resources. The resources in this case are going to be capital, okay? And so we're looking at capital is that we are evaluating in the field of finance how we get the funds from those that have it to those that need it, okay? So. It's very much, we have dollars that are in one, one hand, which we call the surplus units, and then we have the deficit units, okay? So basically what we have here is that we have young firms, we have firms that need to borrow to finance their growth, and there's other funds that are held by other actors in the economy, okay? So when we look at a deficit unit, right, what kind of people, institutions, whatever, are going to be deficit units, so those ones going to be borrowers, Okay, the ones that are going to be borrowers, right, we're going to have households, right? Households have to finance it. A lot of you are going to be, be taking out student loans. You are a borrower. You also need to borrow when you're buying a car, buying a house, doing some of these other things. What other things are going to be deficit units? These are going to be firms, right? Companies need a lot of capital, right? So they're going to have to go out into the market, raise some capital to build their factories, build their machines, expand production, do these other things. So firms are going to be deficit units. Then we're also going to have governments, okay? And by governments, we mean local, state, county, the federal government, U.S. federal government, and then all the other countries' governments, right? We have a whole number of governments that borrow, okay? So who can be the ones that are surplus units, okay? Is that we can have excess funds from households, right? Households have excess funds. You put your money into a retirement account, those funds in your retirement account are getting sent out to someone else to use as capital. Okay. Then we also have firms. There is a number of firms that have a lot of excess capital. Most of these are mature firms, companies like GE, places like that. They're buying other companies, they're acquiring companies, they're getting their capital out there to, to those that need the funds. Okay. And then we also have government. Okay. As we were talking about, many of you have student loans. A lot of those loans are facilitated by the federal government, right? So the federal government is a lender. Okay, and you are a borrower. Okay, so basically what we have here is that this entire area in the middle, this kind of black box here, which I'm drawing blue, of course, this here is basically going to be the field of finance. It is how we facilitate the transfer of funds from those with them to those that need them. Okay, so when we're looking at this is that there's a couple different ways that we can get the funds from those that have it to those that need it, okay? The first one is we're going to refer to as a direct transfer, okay? And a direct transfer is you just loan money to me. I buy your company, whatever it is. This is A walks into the market, B meets B, and then they do a transfer, okay? And then there's two other ways that we can do a an indirect transfer, okay, and this is going to be using someone else to help us facilitate this process, okay? One of them is going to be through the financial intermediaries. And a financial intermediary is someone like a bank, right? A bank sits there, they take deposits, and then they loan them out. The bank is sitting in the middle, right? You put your money in your bank account, you know that you're not subject to the credit risk of whoever the person is that's borrowing on the other end. We know that the money we stick into our account gets loaned out, but I don't have to care about the default on it or not. The bank pays me a rate, well, they very low, but they pay me a rate on my savings account, right? And then they loan the funds out. I don't have to worry about it. They are an intermediary. They are able to stand in the middle and, and do their job and not subject to me to more risk. The other one is that we can look at from market, right? And in the market, this is where basically we have other people that are helping to facilitate the process of getting from point A to point B. In the market here, this is basically investment bankers. Okay, investment bankers, it is their job to go out and find people. So what we might do is we might hire an investment banker to go out and find someone to buy our debt or to buy stock in our company. And that is their job and that's what they are doing. They are not actually taking possession of anything, but they're matching up buyer and seller and then they're stepping out of the way, right? So if I loan money to by buying a bond to General Motors and General Motors defaults, right? They go bankrupt the buyer of that bond 
right? It's still on the hook, right? Unlike in a bank. One way you might, might, might want to think about this is that an investment banker, basically what they are doing, right, is that they are acting something like Match.com, okay? Is that they are helping to facilitate the process of matchmaking, right? So that's essentially what they are doing, and they're collecting a fee for that process, okay? So we can go through the intermediaries, which are banks. We can go through the market, which are and the investment bankers. Now, keep in mind that when we talk about an investment banker, they are not in a banker in the traditional sense. They do not take deposits, okay? You know, investment banking function is not taking deposits. An investment banking function is helping to facilitate getting funds from those that have it to those that need it in, in traditionally much larger amounts, okay? Now, one thing that we want to look at here is we want to talk about this notion of market efficiency, okay? So with efficiency, if we think of things as being efficient, okay, the one of the first things that comes to my mind when I talk about efficiency is fuel efficiency, right? So if we talk about fuel efficiency, it is how much fuel it consumes and how much output comes out of it, right? So we talk about something as being efficient, it means it has lower waste, right? There's less waste in the process. When we have cars that are more fuel efficient, they're getting from point A to point B on less fuel, right? They are more efficient, okay? And so when we talk about a market structure here in a financial market is that we want to be able to get the funds from A to B without a lot of waste in the process. So when we talk about the efficiency here, when you lower waste, that is a lower in the amount of fees and transactions costs because there's a lot of stuff that can go in, in between, right? If, I, if it's hard for me to raise funds, if I have to go out and I have to go knocking door to door, I might not be able to raise as, as many funds as I want, okay? So when we talk about efficiency, it's allocating funds with lower fees at lower costs. And when we're talking about the allocation, right, it's that we are allocating the funds to their optimal use. The allocation of all the funds goes towards their optimal use. What sort of things are going to be optimal? They're the things that are going to be the most profitable. Okay. What is the most profitable outlet? Because what happens is investors are always going out and searching for the highest possible profit. So the companies that are going to be generating the most profit are the ones that are going to be able to generate the lowest transactions costs and we will help with that allocative efficiency. Okay. So the key points here, getting the funds from point A to point B at the lowest cost, being efficient, and it is doing it through whatever method, whether it is through the intermediaries, whether it is through the, the, the market and investment bankers, or if it is through a direct transfer. Sometimes a direct transfer is going to be the easiest way. Okay, so it's just that that is what we're going to be studying in the future lectures.